What's up, sons? It's Blind Ride with Cybertech once again as a part of the 8700K mod in, of course, the new Corsair Obsidian 500D case. We are going to go ahead and put a water block on the Titan X Pascal. So the little P, big P, I don't know how that works. The first Titan X Pascal because, yeah, we need it to be better than a 1080 Ti, don't we? So stick around. Welcome back. So I'm just going to go over how to do it. That's pretty much it here. You'll get some B-roll along with it. And today we're going to be using the Heat Killer 4 water block from none other than Watercool, which I'll leave a link to in the description below. This particular one's going to be the nickel plated one, and that's primarily just due to looks and what we're going for in this particular build. So to start things off, if you guys are looking for instructions on how to do this, you can check out watercool.de. The first step is going to be preparation of the graphics card, so make sure you remove the assembly back plate. For this, I recommend using a tiny tuner. I have a couple of them, and they're super handy and come with a whole bunch of different bit sizes, including some small torques that you can use on other mobile devices, and they're pretty cheap. I'll leave some in the description below for you guys to check out. Once you've removed the back plate, the original cooler needs to be removed as well with the remaining residue. Now, when you're removing the cooler, there's pretty much only the back side, the nuts on the back side that you need to remove. And that's because you don't actually need to remove any of the Allens on the front side of the cooler, just to make that clear. Because all we're trying to do is get the cooler off. Now there's two more screws that you want to remove on the actual IO. And once you get those out as well, which I'll leave a picture up here for you, you can remove the old cooler. Now it will be stuck on there a little bit due to the adhesive on the thermal pads. So you might have to pry a little bit, just be really careful so you don't break anything. Once you get it pulled up a little bit, there's gonna be two fan connections that you need to get removed as well. And since we're going with a water block here, we're not gonna really worry about replacing or putting anything uh, in place of these fans so don't worry about that as we move forward but just make sure that you remove them carefully so you don't damage any other components so once you've removed all the adhesive which you can do with some alcohol and a cotton swab or a microfiber cloth whatever you prefer there I prefer the cotton swab because microfiber probably scratch that depending on which ones you can get some of them do conduct quite a bit of uh, ESD of course I know that you're probably not gonna have too much trouble with that depending on the area you're in, just something to keep in mind. The cotton swab works well for me. Just go ahead and remove all of the thermal paste off of the die and then remove whatever is left over from the adhesive of the thermal pads, the original thermal pads. Once that's removed, you're gonna place the new thermal pads on and then you can choose either a thermal paste or a tim. Now notes about tim is that if you're using any aluminum that you're gonna to wanna to steer clear of it. And I also recommend if you're going to use tim like I did in this particular case to go ahead and get some protective coating for the PCB surrounding the die as tim can move quite easily and you never know if something's going to go on there. I put, In this particular case I use Thermal Grizzly and I'll leave a link to that in the description and uh, I still would probably just recommend Thermal Paste just because that's going to be the safest route to go for you. Once you get the thermal pads on and in place per the PDF instructions that you can look up that we referred to earlier, I just went ahead and flipped the GPU over and then put the lip from the IO you know, to the edge of the table so everything laid flat and then just use the supplied screws to go ahead and fasten it to the graphics card. So once that was all done, we were good to go. It's pretty straightforward, fellas. It's not that difficult to install a water block on a GPU. So I thought you guys might enjoy, you know, getting a little bit more comfortable with it by taking a look at the video and seeing that Blind Run from Son of a Tech can do it as well. Now we will be placing this in the case and getting it all cooled up and well, cooled up, getting it all you know, hardline tubed up, tubed up, there you go, lubed up, no, tubed up. Tubed up. Yeah, so once we get it tubed up like that, all we're gonna have to do is come back to y'all with some results. We're gonna be having two 360 millimeter rads. They are the thin rads cooling an 8700K and this Titan X Pascal. I'm pretty stoked on it. You can check out the rest of the parts 
in the live stream I did with the initial build, which was essentially just kind of getting it together and see kind of where we were at there. You can also see the initial benchmarks as well on this channel, which I will also link in the description as well. Final thoughts is I'm pretty happy with the look of this particular water block and really impressed with the build quality and so on. So if the cooling, you know, keeps up with everything else I've tried before, like the EKs, now I'm going to be super happy because it has a different look and it says made in Germany, which is just awesome. I'm a Volkswagen guy, so I'm pretty stoked on that. Be sure to hit the like, comment, and subscribe down below. Don't forget to come hang out in Discord and check me out at twitch.tv slash sonofatech underscore for nightly gaming streams at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time every night, so every, every night. And come give me a sub over there with your Amazon Prime uh, membership because that will help me out. And it's a free way for you to support the channel financially. Until then, I'll see you next Tuesday.